has the lead. Perfect mechanics. Nice job. There's a 44-yard game winner and a celebration of the sidelines as the Colorado Buffaloes open a Pac-12 conference play with a victory, 34-31 in another nail-biter. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. Voice of the boss, Mark Johnson, Coach Gary Barnett. A lot of injuries, a lot of adversity. That was a gutty win by Colorado. That was a gutty, courageous win. And, uh, you know, as a former coach of this university and that football team, a football team here, I'm really proud of the coaches on that staff and the players, the way they hung in there and played to the last play. Buffalo's had a bunch of guys who got getting dinged up. We'll talk more about that. But they played that entire game without LaVisca Chanel, essentially. Without LaVisca out there, you were giving props to Jay Johnson, the offensive coordinator, after the game. Well, I certainly was. I was giving props to the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator, Tyson Summers, because they, they had to get those kids to play in, in tremendously adverse situations. And Jay Johnson, I think those offensive coaches came up with a, a plan that was really solid that could attack the weakness of that defense, which is hard to find a weakness of that defense. So yep. uh, a great job by everybody involved in the program. You know, Stephen Montez completed about 75, 80% of his passes, 330-some yards, three touchdowns, did not take a sack, did not have an uh, interception in this ball game. You expect the fifth-year guy to win you a ball game every once in a while. He was outstanding in this game. He, he was near perfect, Mark. And uh, the offensive line did a good job of keeping him clean, no sacks. Weren't even close. I don't think he was able to step into throws. Yep. Uh, and he he knew where to throw the ball, and he was uh, made great decisions, and he ran his club. You know, we, we've talked so many times about how great this receiving room is and how talented they are. LaVisca wasn't there. Katie had moments tonight. But Tony Brown steps up again. Over 150-some yards receiving, three touchdowns. He's just touchdown Tony Brown. I mean, that, that guy is so <laughs> solid. It's unbelievable, isn't it? He's a consummate pro is what they call him around the locker room, and that's what he is. The way he prepares, the way he goes about doing things, he does everything right, and then he catches the heck out of the football. Yeah, good stuff by Tony Brown. Three touchdowns. It was a heck of a pregame speech by head coach Mel Tucker, and we were there to capture it. We all do. Coaches, man, we, we love this group of guys, man. We got a talented group that's hungry and wants to have success. Hey, quick walk now, let's go. Let's go, we're moving. Come on, come on. Things we talk about every day is what you got to do to have success. Do your job. I want to prove to everyone, everyone, that we can line up for 60 minutes, play in and play out. And what I want most is in the fourth quarter to run the ball down their throat. Stop the run. Let's go, Buffalo. Let's go, Buffalo. So it's going to go back and forth, right? It's going to be that type of game. We know that, right? But at the end of the day, that's right where we want them. And that's who we are. Is everybody good? Yes. Okay, play for the guy next to you. Let's go. Let's go. Well, Mel Tucker was great. Pre-game, he was great at halftime. He's great on the air with us on the radio network at halftime. And the Buffs get a great victory. By the way, first road victory against a ranked team since this guy was coaching and they won at UCLA in 2002. How about that first time ever they've won here in Tempe? Well, it was hotter there than it was here. I can tell <laughs> you that. that. It was about 100 degrees in L.A. that day. Yeah. And we just ran the ball right down their throat. But uh, it was a great game then. But this was a great game here. We we didn't have as much adversity as this team right. had today. Well, I hope none of these injuries are serious. It didn't look good with Mustafa Johnson. I, I think LaVisca didn't look serious. We'll find out, I guess, as time goes on here. Mel Tucker's building something. He's changing an attitude, isn't he? He's creating a culture, yeah. Mark. And uh, he's doing it one step at a time. But... You can't create it unless people are buying in, and these guys are buying in. And it just takes uh, three games like he's won and, and the fourth game that he might have won uh, to get converts. Yeah. And so it won't be hard. Hey, how about the defense? Do you think about all the guys that went down? I mean, you and I were checking the roster. <laughs> all these guys were brand-new first-year players. And, you know, especially down the stretch, Terrence Lang got a big sack down the stretch. That front four, a bunch of first-year guys started finding pressure late in the game. How about Darian Rakestraw? He was a receiver when I first started doing this job. <laughs> That's right. He steps in and made a great catch. Yeah. He used his body. What a great catch that was. Davion Taylor was right in the, in the face of the quarterback. But, yep. um, you know, I like the last two sacks. Yeah. The last two plays, they played the hardest. And that says a lot. You know, with all the injuries, it's good that the Buffs have a bye week coming up, isn't it? No question. Yeah. You always need bye weeks, yeah. especially this time of year. All the, you know, you go four games like this in a row, that kind of pressure. But, you know, Mel's right. He's he's anxious to see him go play again. Yeah. And uh, they, you know, they feel that. Yeah. Buffalo's never trailed this ball game. They end up winning in that 44-yard field goal by James Stefano. They get their first win ever 
And they knock off, by the way, their second ranked team already in 2019 as they take care of number 24, Arizona State. We're going to let the coach go. Bobby Passavano is going to join us next as we continue here in the Stampede. Crossing routes underneath, and Montez going to keep it. And now he's got a man, and that's going to be six for Colorado, Tony Brown. Montez, he has a man, and that is a Colorado touchdown. Tony Brown lays out second touchdown of the night. Not one, not two, but three for touchdown Tony Brown. He went for 157 yards. Buffs win it 34-31. First one ever here in Tempe. Back at the Stampede. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Quarterback Bobby Passavetto was on the sidelines. How do you proud of your Buffaloes after this one? That's a big win on the road, especially with the adversity they faced. Young guys having to step up and play that weren't, you know, haven't really done it before. Yep. Um, yep. You know, it was a back and forth game, but you give them credit. They made plays when they had to make plays. How about Steven Montez? I know as a former quarterback, you appreciate fifth year guy. You want a guy in this circumstance, a lot of adversity, step up, be big in big situations. Well, he didn't make a big mistake, didn't take a sack, didn't throw a pick, 337 yards, three touchdowns. He was outstanding. You know, I think this may be the best game he's played since he's oh. been a buff, just yeah. for all the reasons you just said. He, he made good decisions, no turnovers, smart with the football, and made the big throws when he needed to make them. Yeah, I know when Bobby played, he had some great running backs out there. <laughs> I'm not sure he got a stable receiver. He had some good ones, but maybe not a stable like these guys had out there. And, you know, Fiska didn't play much. He gets dinged up. KD had moments out there. Certainly a nice kickoff return or two. But then Tony Brown steps up and has a game like he had. Played incredible. Very impressive. And, you know, that's the beauty of this game, right? When, when somebody goes down or somebody's not playing great, that's when guys get opportunities to step up and make names for themselves. Yeah. And Tony Brown's lights out tonight. You know, we were just talking with Coach before the break about the culture that Mel Tucker's building. It's changing, isn't it? It is. I mean, my conversation with him at halftime was, was pretty intense, you know, <laughs> and I mean, but he's bringing that to all these guys on this team and they're responding to it well. You know, he, he said coming out of the locker room or in the locker room to the team, he said, I can't wait to get back out there. Buffs were up by three at the intervention, but he couldn't wait to get back. This infectious in this team, I think. It is. You can see his passion, his want to, his desire to win, and it's just trickling down to all these kids and you see it in them too. You know, that offensive line did a good job of protecting quarterback Steven Montez tonight. Now, they didn't run the ball overly effectively. They did enough out there and went into triple digits rushing the football. But the offensive line did a great job. Coach Chris Kapilovic is, I've always said, if you look at the dictionary under offensive line coach, they should have his picture next to it. He's a colorful guy, and we had him mic'd up during the game. Here we go. Tyree Wright. Tyree Wright. Tyree Wright. Here we go. Hip. Let's move. Here we go. Hip. Track, track, track. Get vertical. Let's go. Hip. Set. Hip. Move. Let's go. Stay in line. Get a shot of water. Hip. Move. Run. Play fast today. Hip. Run. Here we go. Left shoulder. Hurry up. Press reach. Press reach. Here we go. Hip move quick. Hip move. Track, track, track. Low hands. Tight hands. Hip. Come on. Quick. Mike. Pads down. Tight elbow. Let's go. Riverside. Face that way. Pass throw. Here we go. Give me a good bull rush and snatch. Wake him up. Bull and snatch. Here we go. Get set. Hey, I'm going to move you around. Get over here. Hip. Come on. Sink. Hands. Mike. Good. We got Red Oregon, Cluster, Red Oregon. Hup. Here, your A, your B. Cluster over here, Cluster over here. Break. Here we go, Red Waco, Red Waco. I'm tracking the nose, he goes away, I'm climbing. He tells me I got him. Hup. Hup. Good, good, Tim. All right, let's go, man, bring up your team. Straight, 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 straight. Come on, we gotta move our feet. Move your feet on contact, man. Anchor down, snapper. Anchor down. Drop that foot. Get in there. Good job. Coach Camp, outstanding. One of the great personalities in the state. You've been around here much? Uh, not a lot, but he's a personality. The, the, the little time I have been, it's pretty, it's pretty fun to be around. You can see why those guys respond to him. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's huge. I mean, that's what these young kids want as players. They want a guy they can look up to and yep. react to, and, and they, as they're having as much fun as these kids are. How about defensively? Now they, they certainly gave up some points and some yards in this ball game, but you know the one thing that strikes me with Tyson Summers is doing on the defensive side. 
they, they may give up plays, but they never stop. And there's always somebody trying to make a play out there. Yeah, you're right. And, and they make big plays when they need them. You know, yeah. creating turnovers or just look at the the last possession for Arizona State. Two set, you know, two good quarterback pressures where we yep. couldn't get to them all game, yep. and then all of a sudden those guys, you know, with three and four man rush, get to them when they needed it most. And you look out there. And I was joking with Gary a moment ago. I said, you know, they were using guys that are first. I was looking at the roster. Who are these guys <laughs> yeah, out right, there? But yeah. boy, they grow up in a quick, you know, quick uh, way, don't they? I, and that, I think that comes from coaching and, and, and leadership on the team, right? Because yeah. they're prepared and they're ready. They might be young. They may not have done it before. But you can see tonight when they got thrown in the mix, none of them were scared about it. I mean, they stepped up when they had to. Jaden Daniels, outstanding quarterback for ASU. I know you were impressed by him. But finally, they, they got the interception. He hadn't thrown one yet this year. Darian Rakestraw was playing in place of Aaron Maddox, who got hurt last week. It was a huge play. It was, I mean, it saved the game. I mean, he, that was in, in, uh, incredible timing when they needed it most but that kid's pretty special for yeah. Arizona State by week this team needs that badly doesn't it yeah banged up they got to get healthy they need to regroup a little bit and get guys bodies right and, and hopefully they're able to do that before Arizona yeah the Buffaloes have won three of four now against Arizona State think of this they've knocked off a ranked team for the second time this season number 25 Nebraska that was fun this one was equally as fun here in Tempe as they win it 34 31 went for the first time in six games down here in Tempe we'll let Bobby go we're going to continue on unpacking this one but the Buffaloes heading into the bye week one and all Pac-12 conference play, three and one overall. We're continuing to stampede in the moment. Proud of you guys, what you fought, proud of the coaches. We knew it was gonna go all the way down to the end, and that's what we wanted. Hey, look, and listen, that's a credit to you, okay? Our weight room, okay, your, your character, your competitive character, okay, and I'm and I'm proud of you. And we're, hey guys, this is not the end, this is just the beginning. <laughs> Great comments for the head coach, Mel Tucker, after the Buffs got a gutty win opening up Pac-12 conference play last weekend down in Tempe, Arizona, 34-31. Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. This guy had a big game, nine receptions, 150 yards, three. Count them, three touchdowns. It's uh, Tony Brown. You know, Chev once told me that uh, before coming here, you were touchdown Tony Brown. Last year, he started calling you first down Tony Brown. So now you're back to touchdown Tony Brown again, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It feels, <laughs> be, it feels great to be, you know, called touchdown Tony Brown. So I just stick with that. How about that game, though, the other night? I mean, you want to talk about a game of attrition. I mean, guys were dropping like flies, and you guys just kept playing out there. That was a great mentality, a hard-fought victory, kind of, a, you know, an intestinal fortitude kind of victory. Definitely. You know, you guys were going down. We just had to step up. You know, some of the younger guys got in. You know, they got their playing time. You know, they, they, did, they did a couple good things out there. And it's just next man up, like I said before, it's just next man up. You know, we're going to face a lot of adversity. It's just we got to do our job. I don't know if you heard Mel Tucker's comments. He came out on the radio network and was just on fire, bone to bone, nose to nose, belly button to belly button. What was he like at halftime with that ball game? Uh, he was he was pumped, you yeah. know. Um, he came in with the mentality that we can be, we can beat them, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, just keep on fighting, he said. You know, just, just keep on fighting. Don't let up. You know, just next man up. You know, just keep doing your job, and that's what we that's what we did. You know, we've talked so much about how deep this receiver room is, and obviously Lobiska got a lot of attention before the season. But boy, you just had a big game. KD had a big game the week before. Visca's had a big game. I mean, any given game, whoever they're paying attention to defensively, there's going to be one or two other guys going to go out and make some plays, aren't there? Definitely. Uh, Montez has a lot of weapons. You know, he has me. You know, he has KD. He has Visca. You know. When the, when the defense tries to double team one of us, you know, there's, there's two of us left out there. Two or three of us left out there that can, that can also make plays. There's such a steadiness about your game. Do you think you over the course of time you've matured to the point where you, that, that's kind of how you play? Definitely. Every practice I come out, you know, I try to get 1% uh, better each day. Yeah. You know, work on stuff that I need to work on. You know, just doing a little thing, just extra stuff, extra work, you know, watching film, you know, even, even just, you know, watching myself. You know, just being able to just prepare and, you know, just just keep working. Three touchdowns in that victory over Arizona State. Last guy to do that, by the way, was Shea Fields about three years ago for the Colorado Buffaloes. I don't know if you saw the photos and some of the video. These guys looked awful sharp, though, getting off the plane in Tempe. And here's a story about all those black suits they were wearing. First road trip of the year for the Buffs, and something new took place on the plane today. Uh, our young men were uh, in designer suits, some black suits, some charcoal suits. They had their option to choose and it was uh, pretty fun to watch those guys today dress up. Coach Tucker came from Georgia and Alabama. Players in the SEC, the schools he was at, dressed in suits. 
So we asked what our policy was, and in the past we just had primarily just uh, road sweats that we wore on the road. But guys were excited to uh, put their own twist on their fashion today, the black suits and the charcoal suits, and uh, you know, a lot of selfies, a lot of grandstanding. Great day for the Buffs. Longtime Buff supporter Jerry Rutledge at the premier clothing shop in Colorado Springs, and Jerry came up with some of his staff, uh, Luke and John, and took some measurements of our guys a couple months ago, brought the suits up about two weeks ago, and uh, this is the first time we were to sh showcase those on the road. One thing Mel thought about with, when you're dressing suits is it's a business trip and dedicated to business, um, all about business, and uh, here to get a win in Arizona State this weekend. Yeah, good looking suits out there. You guys looked uh, very professional, right? It was a business trip, wasn't it? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Uh, you know, Coach talked about acting like pros, you know, being like professional. So the business, you know, business to tire, you know, we just, you just, we just got to feel good, look good, you know, play good. So <laughs> that's just my mentality. So, yeah. hey, hey, by the way, speaking of uh, feeling good and looking good, we heard Mel say feel good, coach good. Uh, what did you think of the shorts he was wearing there? Uh, it, it was unusual. You know, <laughs> yeah. I never seen a coach do that before, but, you know, like I said, look good, feel good, and he looked good and he felt good. So he's doing his own thing. And there you go. 34-31, the Buffaloes winning. All right, now to a bye week. Uh, take us kind of through. I just heard one of the coaches here on the practice field say maybe a bye week, but it's not an off week. There's an attitude with this week, isn't there? Definitely. You know, uh, just because it's a bye week, we don't have a game, doesn't mean, you know, we have time off, you know, stuff like that. We're still grinding, you know, we're, we're preparing for a good U of A team, mm -hmm. you know, so we're not letting off the pedal. We're still grinding, getting good work in, extra, extra work, you know, since we have a lot more time. So. Yeah, it's, it's, we're still grinding. How about you as a veteran player? You get a bye week like this. Obviously, you know, you want guys to get healthy, but is there also kind of a mental refreshing? Definitely, definitely. Uh, with, the, with the practice going on, we, we, we have a lot of, you know, a lot of walkthroughs going on right now. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, a lot of mental reps, you know, just to re refresh our mind and stuff like that. So, yeah. You guys sitting here at 3-1 and one right now. one and one Pac-12 conference play, obviously, after the victory of Arizona State. Is there a thought that you guys can go out and win this South Division? Definitely, and that's our mentality. You know, each each game we want to we want to win win each game. You know, but it's just one game at a time. You know, so right now we're just worried. We're just focusing on uh, U of A. So just one step at a time. I like it. Remember again, he's touchdown Tony Brown. He had three scores against Arizona State. As the Buffs on a bye week, get ready for Arizona coming to town for family weekend. By the way, week from this coming Saturday. Coming up next here in the Stampede, we've got a very good tennis program here at CU. We're going to talk to some of the ranked Buffaloes next. Well, it was a great weekend for Colorado soccer and volleyball. How about senior captain Taylor Corningai for the soccer team? The Pac-12 Conference voted her the top offensive performer this past week. The Henderson Nevada native recorded six points in two games for Colorado this past week, helping the Buffaloes to a 2-0 record. Now at Denver, she registered another assist in CU's two-zip victory. It was her fifth of the season, 23rd of her career. She's now just one shy of tying Fran Munley for first in Colorado soccer history. The Buffs close non-conference play with an 8-1-0 record. The Buffs open up Pac-12 play at Arizona on Friday. Meanwhile, the Colorado women's volleyball team closed out the non-conference slate, winning the 2019 Colorado Classic Tournament with a three-zip sweep of Campbell University on Saturday evening at the event center. Senior Justine Spann led the way with a dozen kills and a 241 hitting percentage. She closed out the tournament with 51 kills and 10 sets to lead Colorado. Freshman Sterling Parker had a strong airless night as well, swinging 18 times without giving up a point and putting down 10 kills in the process. The Buffs now have a short turnaround, heading into Pac-12 conference play. Team travels to Salt Lake City to take on number 18 Utah before heading to Corvallis to battle the Oregon State Beavers on Friday night. Boy, it's great to see the soccer and volleyball team doing fantastic. Back here in the Stampede, voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. Another sport coming up very shortly here is the tennis team. And boy, we're excited about that. Sara and I are joining us here for a couple of minutes. Sophomore for the Buffaloes. It's about ready for the season to get going, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, your sophomore year, nationally ranked. Mm -hmm. But you've got a unique story to how you became a Buffalo. Kind of, kind of tell folks how you ended up here and where you came from. Um, so I'm actually from Malaysia, but when I was about nine years old, I moved to Australia. Okay. So from there, I kind of like grew up playing tennis over there. All right. Yep. And... Danielle recruited me very late last year in like November or December, so I was kind of rushed to come here and start in January. So where does the accent fall then? From Malaysia or from Australia? I guess kind of both. <laughs> <laughs> Gets mixed a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a long way from home though. Mm -hmm. How'd the family feel about you coming to Boulder, Colorado? Um, they definitely miss me. We have uh, my older sister, my youngest sister, and me. So my older sister is actually in North Carolina for uni as well. So I guess it's kind of quieter in the house. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah. Where does the tennis talent come from in the family? 
Are you the only one? No, so all three of us play. Okay. Um, and my dad played Davis Cup for Malaysia, so I guess from wow. him, yeah. Okay, fantastic. All right, was dad a pretty good coach when you were growing up? He was, yeah. 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 Uh, coming here to Boulder, though, uh, easy choice, tough choice. I mean, you knew Daniel Steinberg, obviously, in Australia, but it's a beautiful place. How about the recruitment? It's a really beautiful place. I didn't actually come for an official visit, but mm -hmm. just looking at the pictures and everything and hearing what people had to say about Boulder, it, it just sounded amazing. Uh, ranked 65th in the country, as I mentioned off the top. I think it's pretty heady, doesn't it? I mean, you're a very, very good player. Does that <laughs> raise your expectations going into the year? I mean, I guess I'm okay. I just... I just want to keep getting better as it goes on. I don't really want to think about rankings and much like that. All right. She's not, well, not only ranked as a singles player, but a doubles player as well. And we caught up with her partner, Monica Malenin. This is my senior year going to be. And then because I'm good with good friends with Sara, so I'm very excited to play with her. I have never played with her. I don't think I take pressure from the ranking like it's an honor to be <laughs> ranked well Sarah is totally different person their energy and like they are very different kind of people I feel like because we get along very well with Sarah it's gonna be good of course now I want to enjoy every match as much as I can I feel like expectations are higher now for myself but I feel like that's a good thing I feel like I play better and study better when I have some pressure. Well, that's Sara's uh, doubles partner, Monica Malinin, uh, doubles, singles tennis. Talk about the difference in mindset in terms of kind of how you approach those two. Um, doubles, I feel, is a lot more fun for me personally. I, have, I tend to have a lot more fun on court and it's so much more easier because you have someone supporting you on the side as well, whereas okay. singles, it kind of, like even though you may have a coach on court, it kind of feels a bit lonely because you have to figure things out by yourself. You have to like go through the emotions by yourself. Sure. Do you have to have a great relationship? You know, we talk like in football, for example, offensive linemen, they have to have a great relationship and communication. Is, is that true in tennis when you're playing doubles as well? Yeah, definitely. Like if I'm, if I'm moving one way and Monica doesn't know it, like okay. <laughs> probably going to lose the point. So we definitely need to be communicating all the time to like get our tactics through and also to like and express how we're feeling. How do you think you've become a better player now in your sophomore year? Um, I don't know if I'm better <laughs> yet or not, actually. Well, coach is standing right over there. You better say you're getting better, right? <laughs> I hope I'm getting better. <laughs> you got some big tournaments, though, coming up. You're going to find out if you got better here shortly, yeah. aren't you? Tell, tell us what's coming up on the schedule. Um, so we're going to Houston this weekend to play a tournament at Rice. And then next weekend, me and Monica are going to go play All-Americans. Well, awesome. Good luck this season. Thank you. All right. Sarah and I are joining us here from the CU women's tennis team. As we put a wrap with a Buffalo Stampede, I'm Voice of the Boss, Mark Johnson. We'll talk to you next time.